Next, I'd like to introduce uh, to the podium uh, <coughs> uh, Senator Kristen Sinema. Senator Sinema is a senior senator from the great state of Arizona. The senator serves on many committees as well as serving as the current chair of the Senate's Commerce, Science, and Transportation Committee's Subcommittee on Space and Science. So we're very grateful for, for your attendance here today. It's a topic very close to our hearts here. Uh, as Senator, she has been an advocate not just for space exploration, uh, but also with a dedicated focus on STEM education opportunities for Americans. Uh, and we thank you for that support, as many of our audience here are the future leaders of our space industry. And we're very much looking forward to your address today. So thank you. Well, thanks so much for that uh, introduction. It's really wonderful to be here with all of you. And I want to say thank you to all of you, future space leaders, for hosting the event and for encouraging young people to pursue aerospace careers in space and satellites. I'm really excited to be here with all of you today, and I'm especially excited to see all the women who are in the room um, who are leading uh, our future in space science and exploration. Guys, we like you too. So many of you, I think, are in college still. Some of you are just starting your careers in aerospace. And I have to say that's just an exciting and great career choice. I wouldn't be surprised to learn that many of you are probably the first in your family to pursue aerospace, maybe breaking conventions and maybe doing a lot of explaining to the loved folks in your life to pursue your dream. But your experience of charting a path that's different than those who came before you is not too different than mine. Um, you know, I didn't follow a conventional path to get here to the United States Senate, and I didn't follow the path that was dictated or told to me. I was more interested in following my intellectual curiosity and my interests. Uh, so, like, when I was growing up, my family faced really difficult times. Um, we lost our home and were homeless um, for quite some years. We were really struggling, but we got by. Um, and for me, education was the key to opportunity and the key to achieving the American dream. I was lucky enough to go to college on both an academic scholarship and a Pell Grant. Um, and I think Pell Grants are the greatest thing ever created by the United States government. They're awesome. Um, and I was really lucky to have access to that help to get to college. I first pursued a career in social work um, to help kids and families, particularly families like my own that struggled. Um, and my personal experience of kind of overcoming those struggles taught me that nothing should stand in the way of a kid's dreams. Nothing should stand in the way of you pursuing your future. And eventually that's why I ran for the United States Senate, to make sure that every Arizonan and every American has the same opportunities and choices to succeed that I had. Um, and that's one of the reasons I'm so excited to see all of you here today. I know that many of you probably overcame challenges in your own life to pursue um, the opportunities you're currently enjoying, and I'm really excited um, that we live in a country that still creates the space for folks to pursue their dreams, regardless of what your personal or life circumstances might be. Our country, um, I think, greatness comes from the fact that we have opportunities available to all of us. We have to reach for them, we have to work hard for them, but it's that entrepreneurial spirit of doing the hard work to become what you want to become. That's exactly what the aerospace industry is all about, reaching out to grasp hold of that which many people believe is impossible. And you all are doing that work every day. So your decision to become aerospace professionals is so important, not just for our country, but for our world. And so the contributions you're making today in your education and your career are going to lead us to the solutions for tomorrow. And I don't have to tell you this, you already know, aerospace provides an opportunity for endless, literally endless learning. It's a field that is constantly looking to the future, that's pushing boundaries, and it's fueled by a fearless pursuit of exploring and learning about the unknown and ultimately it's a field of possibility. It's pretty exciting. As you grow and continue your own professional path, my hope for you is that you won't be bound by conventional ideas or the assumptions that the world provides to you. Because aerospace is grounded in curiosity and innovation, providing a window into other worlds, your job will be to further expand the idea for all of us of what's possible and what we can achieve. 
So as you heard in my introduction, I chair the Senate Space and Science Subcommittee, and I've been really fortunate over the last several years to work with smart and talented aerospace professionals. Um, I want to give a special shout out to Tiffany on my team. She's visiting um, and working on my staff right now from NASA, um, and she's been helping me and my entire team learn about planetary science and defense. And thanks to Tiffany's work, I get to hear from important stakeholders in space and satellite works, um, including government agencies, commercial companies, private citizens. The common theme I hear from all of these stakeholders is that the space economy is growing and that everyone is really excited about it. Just a few months ago, I had an exciting opportunity to meet the Artemis II astronauts. And just so you know, their um, flight suits do look cooler in person. Yeah, um, like they, they looked cool in pictures and then I met them and my staff had to drag me away from that room. They were so cool, these guys and gals. And I spoke with the crew about their 2024 mission to fly by the moon. And of course, as you all know, that'll be the first crewed moon mission in five decades. It's an understatement to say that this crew is exceptional. I also spoke with them about the work that we're doing here in the Senate to support their work and the aerospace industry. And as I said to them, and I'll say to all of you, now is the time for us to implement smart and innovative legislation. You know, last Congress, I was really proud to help shape the Chips and Science Act, which we passed into law. President Biden has signed it. In this bipartisan law that we drafted, we enhanced America's global aerospace competitiveness. We reauthorized NASA, and we invested in key technologies that are important to the space and satellite industry. Specifically, I ensured that the law directed NASA to fund key science research at Arizona universities. So if you're going to a different one, feel free to transfer. Um, <laughs> to maintain the International Space Station and to send the first woman and the first person of color to the moon. So our law also supports two space missions that are spearheaded by universities in Arizona. Led by a University of Arizona scientist, the OSIRIS-REx spacecraft traveled to a near-Earth asteroid named Bennu and collected a sample to bring back to Earth to study. And we expect that to get back to Earth on September 24th. So really soon. This mission, which was the first of its kind, will help us all investigate how planets formed and how life began, and it will improve our understanding of asteroids that could impact Earth. Additionally, there's another mission, the Psyche mission, that's championed by an Arizona State University scientist, will take a spacecraft to a metallic asteroid. And this mission will increase the understanding of planetary formation and interiors by examining iron cores, which are a previously unexplored building block of planet formation. So these missions are very exciting for us in Arizona, but I think they're also very exciting for folks who live in other parts of the country and the world. Arizona, though, has been long at the forefront of innovation. We've got incredible universities leading into space research. But universities and other research institutions wouldn't be successful in this work without the very scientists and professionals making that innovation and exploration a reality. We also know that commercial space companies have noticed the outstanding aerospace workforce that we have in Arizona. So there are companies like Blue Origin and Virgin Galactic who planted roots in my home state to capitalize on the technicians, the engineers, and the scientists who call Arizona home. And that's why it's important that lawmakers acknowledge the incredible work that aerospace professionals are doing every day throughout the country to keep us safe and to focus their eyes on the future. So with this in mind, I was really proud this year to join Senator Hickenlooper in introducing the Bipartisan Orbits Act. This is critical legislation that creates a program to clean up space debris. So it's a bipartisan bill. It's designed to improve national security, support communications reliability, and to protect American astronauts. We believe the bill is also a step forward in addressing a global issue that America and our allies are determined to solve. So with innovative thinking by our space industry, enabled by legislation like the Orbitz Act, no problem is too big to figure out, and it is the government's responsibility to ensure that America continues to lead the way. Right now, there are about 25,000 space debris objects that are large enough to be tracked. Now, that number doesn't include the small pieces of debris like lens covers or shards of metal that come from collisions. In addition to posing a threat to the environment, 
This debris can be hazardous to the International Space Station, it can be hazardous to U.S. military and scientific satellites, and even commercial communication satellites. So tackling this issue is the kind of work that keeps America the international leader in space research and, explanation, and exploration, and that's an example of why I'm so committed to working with aerospace professionals, like all of you, to fuel innovation, create jobs of the future, keep our country safe and secure. And I couldn't be more delighted that you're here doing this work, and I invite you to call on our office as a resource for help as you continue your careers. And with that, thank you so much, and I encourage you all to keep working hard and make your dreams a reality. Thank you. Thank you so much, Senator Sinema. We appreciate your remarks and your support for NASA. Right, now next up we have, to continue along with our programming, switching uh, gears, I'd like to invite...